Ivan spotted a bull moving out of the herd and heading upstream and called me for. Phil was standing by right at that point and as soon as we'd shot the one bull he didn't even move he went straight down and now it was a matter of trying to quickly select another bull while they were all mixing around and as luck would have it right out from the right a whole bunch of hippos started running across our front running right past the the one that Stephen had already killed actually. Oh, there's two hippos coming the one at the back is a bull. You see the second one the second one just get ready he's getting Man, it's great when a plan comes together, isn't it? With two beautiful hippo bulls and, you know, with hippo, you never really know what the trophy is going to be like till you look inside their mouths. But we got lucky, just lovely thick ivory on both bulls, just two great mature bulls. So well done, you guys. Yeah, it's always nice coming out here to the Luego. The recovery is pretty easy and stuff like that. And he's, like Ivan's saying, the, the trophy quality here is unbelievable. Absolutely. Well done, two great shots, man. Great. I'm glad we were all hunt together. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. Crocodiles fit into Africa as most dangerous for one reason and one reason alone. There's a human being eaten by crocodile every single day on the length of the Zambezi River. 2,700 kilometers of river and 365 people in a year. And they're the only animal that sees humans as a food source without any prior learning. You hear about man-eating lions, you hear about man-eating leopards. Those are usually animals that have been injured, they're animals that are very old, but with a crocodile, they look at you as a food source without any prior learning. And a good, healthy crocodile <laughs> sees a person coming down to the edge of the water, and he's thinking one thing, food. A large crocodile can be over 14 feet in length, over four feet wide, and as the fastest land animal over the first 10 yards, that makes him a very, very worthy member of Africa's most dangerous. Crocodiles are generally territorial. A large bull crocodile will be in the same area day after day, and you know, he can also be lured into an area with bait. You'll put the bait in the water, and literally within a couple of days, that water will be alive with these giant prehistoric monsters. Crocodiles are some of the most aware animals that you'll ever hunt. They almost have like a sixth sense. You can be completely out of sight. You can creep impossibly slowly to the top of a ridge. You'll be 100 yards away from the crocodile and he will have already slipped into the water. <laughs> from a professional hunter's perspective, that can be the most frustrating thing. The hunting of a croc usually starts with the shooting of bait. And you know, you can get into an area where you know there's some big crocs, but you seldom see them. 
the day after you've put an elephant leg in the water, the day after you've left a hippo carcass there, man, you'll be shocked at the volume and the number of crocs that will be fighting and hustling and bustling over that bait that you've put there. The incredible strength of a crocodile means that you're required to actually chain down your bait. I like to put a giant stick in the ground. I'll bury the, the stick perpendicular to the river line. I'll have a few chains on that stick to which I'll chain the bait. And it's amazing in spite of that, how they'll very often manage to even break the chains or rip that stick off, such as the power of these animals. The crocodile has got the most incredible sense of smell you can possibly imagine. And once you've put your bait out, just a little bit of rotting meat will call crocs from miles and miles around. And I've even had a scenario where on a trail cam, I've caught a croc, you know, several miles away from the closest water, actually had a lion bait picking up morsels underneath the baits. His incredibly sharp senses and his cunning nature and ability to really hide and stay out in the open make this really a rifleman's game and a game of very precise shot placement. Shoot him again. The golf ball sized target housed in the thick part of his skull as a target you've got to be able to hit from 100 or maybe even 150 yards away. It's a game of reliable equipment and extreme marksmanship. He's an animal that if he's not hit right in the brain, he absolutely is going to be able to make his way into the water and whether he dies in there or not, you're not going to recover your trophy. Thick, heavy teeth housed in jaws that can exert three and a half tons per square inch of pressure coupled with the fact that a crocodile looks as humans as food, certainly makes him one of Africa's dangerous game. Join us as we go through some of Africa's great waterways in search of these leviathan beasts. We're gonna be starting on the mighty Zambezi River, where Alan Scrooby and his wife have traveled to hunt the Nile crocodile with professional hunter Ian Gibson of Chifuri Safaris. They made the decision early to set several baits in the hopes of luring in a huge trophy croc that Ian knew was in the area. Now they were up to the task of checking these baits. We had seen several sets of large uh, tracks and we had also seen some large crocs in the area so we decided that baiting would be the, the way to go after them. These large crocodiles really are creatures of habit and Ian knew where there were some big crocs but that didn't necessarily mean that they were in areas where you could get a shot at them. So luring them into the perfect spot with the bait was an important aspect of this safari. We're going to leave this area now. Um, there were a number of smaller crocs and a few decent sized crocs coming in, nothing shootable. Uh, we're going to leave them alone for now, hopefully. Uh, Later on, we'll come back and a big one will be on the bait. A croc is a very tough thing to judge. So, you know, Ian used his knowledge, he used everything that he knew about the particular area to decide exactly which of the crocs that they had on bait was going to be the one that they take.
neck now. Okay. We came out this morning to freshen up this bait. Uh, there were some crocs on it already and we ran up the river and put out two more where we had seen a lot of crocs yesterday and after we did that we came back to this bait and snuck up on it and uh, there's quite high ridge around here so it makes for a, a great uh, stalking opportunity and saw this croc here uh, he's about 12 4 he's a great croc uh, Ian thought he, he was a nice uh, animal and told me I should uh, go ahead and shoot him and we did Ah, well done, it's a very nice croc. He's got, the, got some nice teeth, he's got a nice head on him. He's a little bit thin here, but he hasn't eaten very much recently. You can see these, these uh, shoulders are sticking out a bit here. But he was he had obviously just moved into the area in the last day or so. And uh, he put in a very nice shot. Well done. Thanks, Ian. Our next trip takes us into the middle of Mozambique with Sunny Seal hunting with J.P. Kleinhands. You know, each area is going to have slightly different methods of hunting and in this area you're hunting a very muddy water system which makes sneaking very quietly and a very difficult thing amongst all of this knee-deep and sometimes even waist or armpit deep mud. <laughs> Unlike the baiting that one uses in the Zambezi Valley to lure the crocs in, this area is hunted a lot more by just taking a very small, very shallow draft boat and actually going down the river looking for where a croc's going to be out, knowing that you know, tomorrow it's probably going to come out in the same way. So locating a big croc and then planning an approach for the following day is the way that these kind of areas are hunted. You know, getting off the boat quietly amongst all of this mud, it really is very, very slippery. And, you know, you've got to be far enough away from your croc that you can, you can afford to make a little bit of noise, but close enough that you're gonna know where he is. So when you come back out, you know where he is. So, man, it's not easy, a lot, a lot more difficult than it would have at first seem. You know, the croc looked like it was a big one, but you still never know till you get into position and walking quietly through this very thick tangle of bush is almost impossible. The mud is just absolutely glutinous. And then trying to judge once you've done this big loop judge in such a way that you can come back onto the river from the perfect situation. That's also pretty tough. He's laying facing this way to the right. If you can get to the tree in front of us, try and get a rest on the tree. I don't want to go any closer. Just, just get to the tree and get comfortable. I'm not going to be able to get a shot in. So take your time and make sure you're the first shot. Just get to the tree. Think about it. You know, as you see these different clips, you're going to notice it in several occasions. You know, two or three or in some cases four or five shots are used to actually anchor the animal, even though the first shot was perfectly either through the spine or the brain. He's finished. Well done, man. <laughs> yes, sir, that's a nice crop you got there. Sonny, when I met you, you said a big croc or something you wanted to get too. Yeah, and I never dreamed that we'd come out here and get one like this, JP. I'll tell you what, we've had a heck of a safari, and coming down here on this river, it was like taking a step back in time, you know. Uh, it is just a great hunt. I can't say good enough good about it. We, we're very fortunate. I mean, this is a fantastic crocodile. You made a beautiful first shot. I mean, there was no way I could get closer. 
to back up. So, I mean, you get one, two, and three shots, all of them good shots, and get yourself a very nice crock. That felt good, JP. Thanks well for your done, hard work. Man. Well done. Good job. Now we're going to go back to the Zambezi River once again with Ian Gibson and our good friend Guy Gorney. We had a, a bait in the one river mouth which is quite shallow water and that's uh, an area where we've shot some very big crocs before. It also gives you a bit more leeway when you're shooting them. That you can actually shoot them in the water there because the water is probably only about two, three feet deep. And if you do make a mistake, you quite often have a chance to put in a second shot. We then had another bait downstream of the camp, which was where we had seen two very nice crocs lying in Zambia. And we put out a bait there to attract them back to our side. stopped about 300 meters short of the, the bait and uh, there'd been a couple of big crocs that had been lying on the Zambian shoreline so that's why we put the bait here a couple of days ago and now we're going to walk in there quietly and just hopefully even catch one at this time of day feeding or even lying on, out on the bank. They don't normally lie very close to the bait so they could be anywhere on this sort of shoreline from here down maybe the, for the next sort of 800 meters or so but they generally come in for their feed uh, once they've had enough to eat, then they, they go and find a place on the bank where they crawl out and lie down. So we're just going to go down quietly and, and take a trip down to the actual bait site and have a look. As we had discussed, these crocs can feed and then rest kind of anywhere that's convenient. So you have to be prepared to really from when you get out of the boat. Uh, Croc may be around in the next bend. We hadn't gone very far from the boat when uh, uh, watching Ian from behind, uh, his body language told me there was something special in front of him. When I looked at the croc through my binoculars, I instantly saw it was a shooter. There was not even any doubt in my mind that this is a, it was the croc that we were going to have a go at. So I quickly called Guy up, put the sticks up, and we got onto the sticks as quickly as we could, and he never moved. The croc was about 65 yards in front of us. Uh, Ian uh, told me when I was comfortable to go ahead and take the shot. Lined it up, and as soon as I was ready, I pulled the trigger. As we approached uh, the crocky and went forward, I stayed a little bit to the right. It did start to move. Uh, Ian asked me to place another shot behind the shoulder uh, going forward uh, to get through the heart and lung area. We've just come down river to come and check the bottom bait, which is, uh, we were we stopped about 500 yards short of the bait and decided to walk uh, just in case there are some crocs there. I came around this bush uh, right next to us here and I walked straight slap bang into the, the big croc lying on the bank here. Got the sticks up and uh, Guy put a very nice shot in. He shot him uh, just behind the smile there and he didn't even move a wink. He's, we had to put another couple of shots in because he's, he's still blinking and whatever and we don't want him to get in the water. 
Uh, the, the worst thing in the world is a croc getting in the water in the Zambezi here, you'll never see him again. And he, he probably won't even float for another week or so. So guy put in a very nice shot and right over there we've got a very nice crocodile. Here we have a very fine cock. Excellent. Well done. Thanks for getting me on him. It was a real challenge. Uh, uh, this is the first croc I've ever hunted. I was amazed at how difficult it is to get a, a really big trophy croc uh, close enough to shoot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another impressive feature of the croc is just how heavy they are and uh, what a job it was to get it in that boat. Of course, we had to make sure it was dead before we dragged it in there. Thank you.